Day nine. These are getting pretty hard. This one was tough. Modeling how smoke flows through the caves. Here's a height map. How high things are at different points. Numbers zero through nine. We need to find the low points and compute the risk level of the low points and sum them. So let's do that first. The first job is to take this and to put it into a NumPy array so that we can deal with it more easily. And let's look at what we have here. So here's the test data on the right. And I've collapsed most of the functions. We create a grid. Let's look at that. That's here. Here's uh, the path to the test data. We read the text. We strip white space from the beginning and end. We split on new lines. That gives us a list of strings. Then we create uh, a NumPy array from this, and let's look at what this is, for every row in, in lines, so for each one of these rows, which is a string, we get every digit in the string, and then we turn that digit into an integer. And we end up with a two-dimensional array. Let's just uh, run to this point, have a look and see what grid looks like. So, um, so here we loaded it in, and it's, um, it's a height map, and you can sort of visually see something about the, the data. So one of the, one of the low points is here. You can kind of see it, the one and two and three. And another low point is over here, the zero. So now we have the grid in a NumPy array. Okay, now, how do we look around the cell to the neighbors. This is an array to show the offsets to the rows and columns for the neighbors, for the four neighbors. What's above, what's below, what's left and what's right. First number is row, second number is column. Minus one means one row above where you are. Plus one means one row below where you are. In the columns place here, minus one means to the left and plus one means to the right. Okay, so we're finding the low points now. And that's a NumPy array with all this. So what is all this? This is for every row and every column, we give RC values. So the top left position is a row of zero and column of zero. And then we want to know if it is the lowest. So let's look at is lowest now. And this, this will return whether the value at the given coordinates, the row and column, is the lowest among its neighbors. So we, uh, well, let's, um, let's just run this. We'll go through and uh, and see one of these. Okay, so we've we've uh, we've been called is lowest has been called from this list comprehension that we were just looking at. And row and column are zero zero. So this is the very top left corner. And the value at that top left corner is a two, as you can see here. And now we're going to get the neighbor offsets. And uh, neighbor offsets is these. So there are four locations to, um, from above and below and left and right. And we're going to process those one after another. So row offset, column offset. Row offset is minus one, column offset is zero. And now we're going to compute 
the neighbor's coordinates given that offset. Neighbor call, neighbor row. Well, the neighbor row is, is minus one, so that doesn't exist. So this is not going to be, um, these are not valid offsets. So invalid offsets is true. So if not invalid offsets, do some more. Otherwise, have, an, have a look at another neighbor call and row. These are not valid. Okay, 1 and 0 is valid. That's row 1, so 0, 1, column 0. So now we're talking about this 3. Uh, this val is this 2 here. And now we want to know if grid, sub neighbor row, sub neighbor call. Remember, neighbor row is 0, neighbor call is 1. So we're looking to the right to see if the number to the right is less than or equal to this value. So it was. So we return false because we know that this 2 is not the lowest among its neighbors because to the right of it we found a smaller number. So we return false. We're leaving the is lowest. All right, so that's our discussion of is lowest. That takes us back to where? To here. So at this point, we now have all the low points. Let me put a breakpoint and run again from here. So now we have the low points. These are the row and column numbers of the low points. And we can print those and look at it in the output. So 0, 1, 0, 9. Uh, 0, 1 is right here. It's this 1. That is a low point. You look around it, there all the all the numbers around it are either uh, are higher. And then uh, 0, 9. Uh, row 0, column 9. That's this 0 here. You look around it, all the numbers are higher. 2, 2. 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2. This 5 here is lower than the numbers around it. And finally, 4, 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is this 5 here. Everything around it is higher. So we found the low points. And um, to compute the, the sum of the risk levels, um, we just need to get the, the values from the grid at those low points. And then you add 1. Let's just have a look here. The risk level is 1 plus its height. So we're adding the 1s all, all together. You get 1, 1 for each of the low points. And then here, this is the sum of the low points. And now we can print out sum of risk levels is 15. We look here and... Uh, for the test data, that's 15. So that's that solves part one. For part two, you need to find basins, and you need to find the largest basin. So what's a basin? A basin is all the locations that eventually flow downward to a single low point. Wow. So the top right basin, you remember that the point is this one. So we look at everything around it that could possibly flow into it. Nines are special. They mark definite borders of basins. So these nines make borders, and that leaves the one and two and three. The three can flow into two, two can flow into one. Let's look at another one. Here's the top right basin, uh, the zero over here. So just sort of expanding a search outward from here, going left and right and up and down. We start at the zero, we look, we look around, and we get to this one, and from the one, then we look around, and we can get to the two, and three, and four, and so on. So why don't we run completely through, and let's look at some of this output here. So from part one, we printed the sum of the risk levels, and now we're doing part two. So we start at the 
at zero one, which is row zero, column one, this, this one right here, and we're going to expand the basin from there. So we start by looking around it. And the we, we can't look up, we can't look above it, but we can look to the left of it. No, yeah, and the left of it should give us a two. So here's what it's saying: expanding basin now to zero zero, and there's a two there. So now we're going to run the expanding base expand basin uh, process from this two. And so when we expand that, where can we go from there? Well, we can't go up, we can't go left. We could go to the right, uh, but that's a nine, so that's no good. We could go down, but that's a nine. So there's nothing to do here. So then we find ourselves, uh, oh, so so that's we're done with the expanding the basin for the, the first low point. And now we're at the next low point, which is a little bit more complicated. Um, well, maybe we should trace through the code for, um, for doing this, and that might take us through the rest of the code. So here, uh, basin cells. We're taking all the low points. We're, we're calling basin cells on those. And then um, that gives us the number of cells in the basin, in other words, the basin sizes. So let's go to basin cells, put a breakpoint in here, and run from the beginning. And I'm going to remove other breakpoints and keep running. Okay, basin cells. Return the number of cells in the basin at start point. And we're called with a starting point of 0, 1, which is where this 1 is. All right, so first we get the value there, which is this one. And then we print a little message, which helps us figure out what's going on. And the message is now in the console, expanding the basin at zero, one, and the value there is one. Okay, so we're to count the number of cells. So we start out by counting the cell itself, and now we're gonna explore around it. So here's a function, higher neighbor points, this finds all of the neighbor points that have a value that's higher. And uh, so the first one is explore point, which is zero, zero. So we're looking at the two now. Now to avoid exploring places where we've already been, we have a set that stores the coordinates of places we've already been. So we're going to add this to the set. And now here comes a recursive call. We've located a new point from which we want to continue expanding the basin. And so we're now going to call basin cells again using this new point. So let's go into it. Now we're in basin cells again. And just to show you kind of a little breadcrumb trail, you can see that we we started here, and we used this map to call basin cells for all the low points. So we called it for the first low point, and we're still working on that first low point, but now we've made a recursive call into basin cells again, which takes us to here. Okay, starting value here is 2, so here's this 2. And we print out our little message, and it's indented to correspond to the recursion level. Um, so now we say we're exploring this basin at 0, 0. The value is 2. So we uh, start with counting the, the cell itself. And now we get the explore points for the higher neighbors, for the neighbors that um, have higher values. And the first explore point is 1, 0. So this means go down. We're going to add this coordinate. And now we're going to recursively call ourselves, And we're back here. And now notice this is growing. There's another level of recursion here. And the value here is 3. So we've managed to make our way from the 1 to the 2 and to the 3. And now we're going to encounter these 9s all around. And so this is going to be it. We're not going to recurse any deeper. 
So here's our next message. And then we, we uh, have a value, uh, a one for the fact that we've got this cell. And now we find the explore points. And I, I predict that they're going to be none. So this loop is not going to do anything right. And now we just return. So when we return, we're no longer going to have three of these stack frames for basin cells. It's going to go back to two. So there it's back to two. And now we're back in the second call to basin cells. Um, and we're about to add whatever that returned to cells. So cells at the moment has, about, has a value of one. We're about to add something to it. Here we go. And cells now has a value of two. And now, what's next here? Nothing. So we're going to return. Now there's just one call to basin cells active. We're about to increment cells. And there's nothing more to do. Cells is now equal to three, which is in fact the number of cells in the first basin. One, two, three. So we return this. And now we're back. Uh, we're done computing the basin, the number of basin cells for the first low point. And then this is going to go on and do the other points. I think now the only code we haven't explored is, uh, well, I'll show you grid value. That's just sort of a shortened way to get the value at a certain point. Maybe in NumPy there's an easier way to do this. Let me know if you know of one. And finally, it's um, higher neighbor points. And this is a generator function. It yields the points uh, to explore. And here's what it does. Let me just read to you this. Provide a sequence of the neighbor points whose values are higher than the point at the starting point. Well, let's get the value of the point at the starting point. Oh, actually here. Um, let's just set a breakpoint in here and we'll run again. Remove the other breakpoints. Okay, so now we're, we want the higher neighbor points starting from the starting point zero one, row zero column one. That's this one. So we're trying to find the higher neighbor points and what are they going to be? They're going to be um, where this two is and where this three is. So neighbor offsets, you remember that's those numbers that tell you how to get from some point to the neighbors around it. Go uh, go up one, go to the left, go to the right, go below. And so now we have the first neighbor offset, which is uh, going to the left. And so let's see what that uh, gives us. That gives us a point to explore that has a negative coordinate. And that is not right. Those coordinates are not in the range of the grid. so. This if is false. Now we go on to the next neighbor offset, looking for coordinates that are in range. And for, the, for this uh, coordinate pair, they are in range. And um, so what are we working with here? Um, the explore point, 0, 0. So we're, the explore point is now this top left position, the number 2. Now we want to get the value there, which is the 2. There's your two. And now we have the logic to see if it's a nine. Remember, the nine is kind of like a hard boundary of these basins. So if this value, if, it's, if this number two is not a nine, and it's greater than starting value, and starting value is a one, then uh, this is, in fact, an explore point, And we're going to yield it right here. We're going to yield it. And uh, what's that going to do? Is that going to return us back to where we were called from? No. Um, we're called again. And now the starting point is um, starting point 
is 0, 0, which is this 2. So now we find the neighbor offsets for that. Well, anyway, I think you get what's going on here. We're just trying to yield the neighbor offsets that, uh, that exist. So we exclude any that are out of, you know, like going to the left when you can't go to the left. We want to exclude those. And then we exclude the nines and we yield the rest. Okay, that is really complicated. It took me a few hours to do this. But that's my solution to day nine smoke basin.